when and how deletion of objects in FIM should happen is a very hard decision to make. In many organizations, deletes are not used since the policies for traceability dictates that deletes are not allowed. In FIM, we have several types of deletes to manage. We first need to decide if we are talking about deleting the objects in FIM or deleting them in some connected data source, like AD. If you would like the object to be deleted in FIM, you would look at two settings. First, the object deletion rules in the metaverse. We can make a declarative rule, for example saying that the user is no longer present in HR, it should be deleted. The default is that as long as there is a connector, the object will remain. We could also add a bit of code, some logic determining when deletes will happen. If we, for example, have a policy that the object should be deleted, char, we then need to set the second setting. This is to define on the FIM service MA that if the metaverse object is deleted, it should also be deleted in the FIM service. If we do not set this option, the object will reappear on the next import and sync from the FIM service. The same setting can be found on the ADMA. But here, we also have the option to determine using code in the rule extension. If you are to work with AD deprovisioning, this is the best way to do it. That way, you can prevent disaster from happening when FIM starts to delete all users in AD due to an empty dataset from HR. At the company, the policy is that no user should be deleted in FIM or AD at the moment. The reason is traceability, which we will discuss later in section 7, where we'll talk about report. But the discussion on deep provisioning is not just deletes. It usually involves the management of users when the contract expires for some reason. We have already seen a part of this in managing the user account control attribute in AD. On TechNet, there is a great Dickey article written by Carol Wops here discussing the different options we have. You can find it using the short URL aka.ms slash themdprovisioning. This article also contains some code samples getting you started when using code logic. At the moment, we also have the option to do active disconnects using the so-called expected rule entries in FIM. This requires that we use a synchronization rule that uses the MPR set and workflow triple. We will not go into this subject in detail since this is not the way I normally solve this. But if you take a look in my book, or at TechNet articles on FIM, you will find plenty of information about this. The complexity of using this option is very hard to explain in the time frame allowed for this screencast. In this video, we have learned that deprovisioning is more than just deleting objects. Usually, we end up with not deleting users since the decisions are too hard to get. This was the last part of our initial section where we have learned the basics around user management. Next up, we will look at groups.